Hello, I'm Chuck Martin, and welcome to the Voices of the Internet of Things. With me today is Matt Strauss, Executive Vice President of Xfinity Services for Comcast. Matt is responsible for Comcast's strategy and deployment of innovative technologies and services for the company's 29 million customers. Matt is a former Executive Vice President of Video and Entertainment Services at Comcast and a former Executive Vice President of Rainbow Media's On Demand Service, where he pioneered the video on-demand model. He has also held several management positions at Disney, ABC. Welcome, Matt. Hey, Chuck. How are you? Uh, I'm good. So uh, you've been a little busy these days. Uh, just a little bit. You know, we are uh, excited here uh, at Comcast and in Philadelphia and just continuing to find new ways of introducing products into the market. And um, and been very focused uh, around the home and, and I think there's a huge opportunity around how we can continue to innovate and provide you know, new services to our customers. Well, you've been doing this for some time, Matt, and, and it, it used to be that, that uh, companies like Comcast, it, it was simply cable. That was, that was pretty easy, cable TV, and then we started doing cable and, and telephone, and, and now we're dealing with smart homes and connected everything. What, how have you seen this evolve over time? Well, you know, um, you know, from a cable point of view, I think a lot of people think, um, you know, cable box and installation and having to schedule appointments and um, and traditional, you know, guides to, to search and navigate their choices. And obviously, things have really transformed and evolved significantly, you know, over the past several decades. You know, if you look at, you know, the products that we're putting out to market today, um, it's never been lacking innovative ideas. It's always just been the technology. And we're now at such an interesting moment in time. Um, it's almost exciting to be quite candidly to be alive at this time because we have the opportunity to deliver new services and products into the market that we just were never able to do before. And a lot of it just has to be, you know, do with the investments that we've made in, you know, continuing to invest in broadband and invest in, you know, our IP infrastructure and cloud infrastructure that allow us to really rethink what does it mean to watch television and what does it mean to be able to access, you know, connectivity in the home? And, you know, if you look at the, the different products and services that we're now deploying in the market, you know, whether it's our X1 platform with cloud DVR and, you know, our on-demand catalog or the ability to now get one gig speeds and, um, you know, and, and Wi-Fi connectivity, you know, it, it, it creates a really interesting platform to now start you know reinventing well what's next and what are the things that we can now build on top of these platforms that could really transform what you know what people would expect to get from from their air quote you know cable company right so in, in the home is tv still the biggest connected thing well you know the it's interesting the the tv um the average person in the, in this country believe it or not consumes between four and a half to five hours of TV a day. Um, when you mention that stat to people, they, a lot of people intu intuitively will say, well, that's not me, but um, it probably is you because, you know, when you think about how, you know, just, you know, people typically might watch a little bit of TV in the morning before they go to work or certainly, you know, during prime time. Um, and then when you factor in, you know, streaming video and the accessibility of all the video across platforms and devices and more and more content being made available on demand, it's actually not hard to consume that much video in a day. Um, so while, you know, you're seeing decreases in live video, um, you know, you're, we're actually seeing increases in total video consumption. So video is definitely the anchor to a lot of the entertainment that um, people typically enjoy in their home. Um, but there's obviously lots of other touch points, whether it's music um, or social media and gaming that also vies for people's time. But um, from an entertainment perspective, video in many ways is still king. Uh, have you seen any transformation in terms of voice with things like Amazon Echo, Google Home and so forth uh, in terms of your business? Well, I think voice, um, what a lot of people probably don't know is before Amazon and Apple launched voice, we actually here at Comcast had launched voice um, using an app. And 
it was a beta. And, and really what we were testing at the time, this is several years ago, was really focusing mostly on the television. And there's this interesting paradox that we saw emerging where, you know, as more and more choices were being made available on demand, um, you know, and, and our ambition is to make everything available on demand. And, you know, we offer hundreds of thousands of choices that you can now access, you know, kind of watch what you want when you want it. Um, and you marry that with the ability to then navigate all those choices. It creates this really interesting dilemma around how do people find what they want to watch and surface what's most relevant to them, you know, in this kind of growing sea of infinity. And voice, we thought, could be an interesting way to start cutting through that. Um, and, and when we were testing it with this app, it was always successful, but, but, but admittedly it was on the perimeter, meaning, you know, it, you had to have your phone with you, you had to launch this app, and then once you launched the app and you had it in your hand, you can start controlling your television. And what really was transformational was when we decided to incorporate that technology into the actual physical remote. And that was like lightning in a bottle. Um, and once we did that, we've now deployed over 17 million of these voice remotes. And you can speak into your remote, similar to what you may find on other connected TV devices, but you can now just speak into your remote and in a given month, you know, we will do, you know, easily we will do over 300 million voice commands where, you know, you have everyday customers who are now using this voice uh, navigation to kind of search and find what they're looking for. And I think we are just at the early stages of this, candidly, even with all the innovations that's happening, I think voice and as it's going to continue to evolve to become much more conversational voice is very much going to anchor the home and the connectivity in the home. And we're seeing this firsthand, even in this kind of very specific use case around how we've embed this, embedded this technology into, into our voice remotes. And what are you doing for connected home objects? So you've got, you've got voice here with, with your own products, obviously. What, what about other smart home devices that consumers are just bringing into their house? Well, you know, there's a couple of dimensions to how um, into, into how we're kind of both um, incorporating devices brought into the home, but also in many ways trying to help lead and scale um, the the connectivity of devices in the home. So let me give you a couple of examples um, on on the uh, on the home side. We just like with video and internet, we also and voice, we also offer a home security product. So customers can sign up with Comcast Xfinity and get 24-7 home monitoring um, and, you know, connected to a central monitoring station, you know, just like you could with some other, other uh, alarm companies, you know, locally in, your, in an area. What I think is different is we also believe connectivity of the home and automation of the home is a critical piece to that. So, for example, in my home, um, you know, I have... Uh, Nest thermostats and, you know, and, and obviously if you're familiar with Nest, which I'm sure you are, you know, it gives you that ability to have the internet uh, access to control the thermostats, but also the logic built into the thermostats to, um, you know, to better monitor and manage, you know, the settings in the home. You know, we also offer August locks. Um, we also have the ability for customers to, you know, get sensors on their windows, but also on their garage doors, for example. So, you know, every time my wife comes home, I know because I have a notification that's sent to me that the garage door has been opened. Um, you know, we offer wireless cameras. And, 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 and I think what's a little bit unique around what we're finding, similar to video, interestingly, is, you know, in the world of video, you know, aggregation is important. Uh, making it easier to have all these choices available in one place and to be able to control and navigate all of those choices, whether it's through a centralized user interface on the television or through an app. And I think automation is going to be similar, at least when it comes to control. So, for example, within the Xfinity Home app, all of those things that I mentioned are accessible in one app. So I can open up the Xfinity app. I can control my August lock. I can control my thermostat. I can control my LiftMaster um, garage door. I can see my cameras. I can set my alarm. And I think there's some there, there's an elegance 
to how all of these devices have to be contextualized. And, and I think that's, to me, something we're very focused on continuing to build upon, um, is not only provide more connectivity in the home, but also centralize and, and make it easier to manage the connectivity in the home. And what's fascinating to me, at least, as it just as a as a customer, as a user, is, you know, if you were to have asked me, do I need these things? I don't know if I would have said yes. I don't I don't know if the average person thinks about these types of things. And it's it's like a lot of technology. You don't really appreciate it until you live with it. And what I have found is if you took any one of those things away from me now, after living with them, um, it would really impact my life. Uh, because, you know, once you start utilizing these very simple types of connective, connective experiences, it's just amazing how quickly it trans transcends from what starts as a novelty into becoming deeply integrated into just your everyday living. So that, that implies, and I've seen research that says this as well, that, that basically pe people don't want a pile of separate things. They want essentially a plug and play platform and and if they can buy from a comcast or a company b or company c they they would prefer that than getting uh, five things that don't really deal with each other well i think look there's always going to be um kind of the early adopters you know the technically savvy um you know folks who enjoy cobbling things together and experimenting and and certainly that exists but when you look at, you know, there's 110 million uh, television households in this country, you know, I, th I think that the, the, the real value is going to be in the simplicity. How do you simp you know, how do you make it really easy for somebody to get to essentially transition to a connected home, both on the hardware side, on the, on how it ultimately gets set up and, and then how do you access and control it? And I think that is really a sweet spot for us. And that's something that we are really focused on is how do we provide that in a very turnkey way, but also make it easy to, you know, to, to really demonstrate the value of, you know, of, of why this is important to you and, and, and why this is going to continue to make your life better. And I think that, you know, what's interesting in many ways is what, what powers almost all of this is the internet, right? And, you know, in addition to video and, and as I mentioned, you know, home security and automation, obviously, we also provide high speed data and we're one of the largest high speed data uh, uh, companies in the country. And historically, you know, Internet has been thought of as speed. How fast is the speed and how how good is the Wi-Fi? And those are two really important dynamics, which is why we're so focused on rolling out, continuing to roll out the fastest speeds like one gig, which we're rolling out one gig speeds now, but more and more people are connecting devices, not using ethernet cables, they're connecting devices, especially in the home, using Wi-Fi. So we're almost equally focused on how do we ensure that, you know, people have the best Wi-Fi in the home. And that's where you're seeing us deploy, you know, new gateways, wireless gateways, like our XB6 gateway, which, you know, is, is I think going to be, is one of the best gateways in the world that we developed and it's really focused on, you know, ensuring that you're providing not only the fastest Wi-Fi but the best coverage in the home. And I think there's a third pillar, if, if speed and Wi-Fi connectivity have been the first two pillars, I think there's a third pillar that's emerging and that is this notion of control. And I don't know if people think of it this way, but um, you know, I'll, I'll give you just my personal example. I'm, I actually have four kids, I have four boys um, and, you know, it, it's interesting while the Internet has improved our lives in so many ways and you talk about social and social connectivity, I think you can make an argument that the Internet has actually in some ways made us more isolated. Um, and you see this. I see this in everyday life. You know, when I you know, when I go on to, you know, the train and I see everybody's head down looking at their phone. Or I walk into my home and I see my four kids sitting together, uh, but they're not talking to each other. They're they're all you know kind of mesmerized by their own devices. So there's an opportunity there around how do we reconnect families, reconnect um, ourselves, 
and 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 rethink you know how we you know really take full advantage of what I think the internet has to deliver, and and I, and that has really been at the heart of a product that we had launched a few months ago called XFi, which is included with when you sign up for internet. So it's that third pillar, and what it's really meant to focus on is not only how do we make it easier for devices to get connected in the home, especially as more and more devices are coming into the home and utilizing the internet, but how do we also give people back control over the internet and how those devices get used. And if you're a parent with kids like myself, how do you as a give the parent in the home more and better control around how you want to allow your kids and, and your family to connect to that internet and those devices. And I think that that's a real, it's a bit of uncharted territory, but I think it's a very important part of how we view the connected home and it's an important part of the value that we want to provide our customers as part of signing up and, and, and being an Xfinity high-speed data customer. So can you talk a little bit about some of the, re I know you did some research around this uh, in terms of activity in the home and some of the things that you found out in your research? Yeah, so we, we had done a survey that is a little bit at the heart and soul of what I'm describing and it's personal to me because as I said, I I experienced this firsthand um, with my four kids and, and I believe a lot of people wrestle with this and it was really focusing on parents and children and you know what's the experience around kind of dinner time and you know there's this you know you know years ago you know it was kind of the you know the the you know, I remember when I was a kid we would we would all sit around the dinner table as a family and we would talk and we would eat and you know that was kind of a really important and special time to my parents and and have interaction together and and that's changed in many ways and when we did this research I think it really that it surfaced a lot of those attributes around, you know, 98 percent of parents that we asked that we surveyed said, you know, disconnecting from devices or, or having a way to disconnect from devices at mealtime is critical and it's having an impact on family bonding. And, you know, one in every two parents have to tell their kids to put away their devices during meals because, um, you know, many of us, you know, either experience this or see this firsthand where, you know, we're, we're constantly tied to checking our phones, you know, and, and every notification and every time it vibrates, it's, you know, it's like becoming instinct. Um, and, you know, when we asked, you know, parents, you know, about just mealtime, you know, two in five parents that we surveyed said they couldn't even remember a time where there hasn't been a device at, you know, at dinner. Um, so it's just this ongoing thread, which I think, you know, especially with, with younger generations where devices, they don't know, uh, they don't know what it's like to not have a device in their, in their lives. And devices are becoming part of, of, of children's, you know, younger and younger that, you know, that it's just becoming an extension of, of their identity. And I think that this is having a material impact for some people around social bonding and family time. And I think that there's a, 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 a almost like a balance in the force that needs to be reestablished. Um, and the question is, if you're a parent, how do you do that? Um, and, and I'm not proud to admit this, but personally, there have been times where I've had to actually unplug my router because I've, I had lost control over you know my kids devices and and having the ability to to kind of kind of police that and there's got to be a better way um no, and that's I, I really... actually i actually noticed that if you had 52 percent of children actually uh have told their parents to put their device away at a family meal. well you know that is <laughs> that is true and, and, and so now i'm going to talk out of the other side of my mouth i mean there is i think many of us are guilty of it as well so you know as a parent you obviously want to lead by example and, um, and none of us are perfect. And, and I'm guilty of this myself, especially when I come home from work, you know, it takes me some time before I can disconnect myself. So in many ways, I, I think that it's, it's a broader symptom. Um, and, 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 and that is something that we have focused on with XFi and, and something that we think we've helped to solve, which is giving parents the tools to better control the internet. So how do they so do, how do they do it? They just have they just have a switch a switch on an app. 
Well, so the this is where the elegance comes into how we've tried to approach this. Um, so if you are a Comcast Xfinity high-speed data customer um, and you take one of our wireless gateways, which many and most of our customers do, you can download the, the XFI app, um, XFI. It's free. And what that allows you to do then is a few things. One is it will immediately show you all of the different devices that are connected to your internet um, Wi-Fi gateway in the home. So it will list all of those devices out, phones, tablets, computers, internet connected TV devices. They all will just show up. Um, and then it allows you as a, as, a, as a parent to do a few things. One is you can assign those devices to individuals in the home. So I have four kids, as I told you. So um, I was able to take all of each of my kids' devices and assign them. So now, um, you know, on a, on a child by child basis, whether it's a computer or a phone, you know, they're all grouped. Um, and I can then set rules. And it's really simple. And those rules could be things like, you know, at a macro level, do I want to just pause the internet during dinner time? I could do that. And it's amazing. And um, I love it. My wife loves it. My kids hate it. But I could just push a button and pause all devices at once. And it's literally like electricity. It's an on-off switch. Um, and it's a real way to snap everyone back to reality to get, you know, to just kind of, you know, focus on family time. It doesn't, it doesn't shut off cell service, though, right? No, it doesn't shut off cell service. Um, but that is something we're working on as well. But um, at least for my kids, Wi-Fi is kind of the heart and soul and the lifeblood to a lot of the connectivity and a lot of the speed. So um, it's, it, you know, but so it's a step in that direction. And just this, this one pause feature um, is for a lot of parents is, is, is almost been, you know, just this transformational. It's been the most popular feature with XFi. So that's one very immediate and easy thing that you can do as a parent. Um, and it gives you that instant control but if you then want to double click and say, I want to set rules around, you know, I've got an eight year old and how my eight year old uses his devices may be different than how my 15 year old uses his devices. You know, I can set rules and those rules can be around when I want to turn off access on a on a on an individual's basis. So, for example, my eight year old, I can set rules where. You know, he, he can no longer um, access the Internet on any of his devices after nine o'clock. Um, but my 15 year old can continue enjoying Netflix and everything and, and all the things that he's doing on his computer until 11 o'clock. So it gives you that level of specificity and control um, around how you as a parent want to govern um, each of your each of the devices, as well as each of the individuals in the home. And you could do what you think is best for your family. Um, and, and it's just that level of, of control that really hasn't existed for a lot of people. And it's something that we identified early on as a gap um, that we really wanted to solve for. And we've solved for it um, with XFi. But it also, you know, if you have, you know, people who come over and they're visiting um, and you want to give them Wi-Fi access, you can easily assign Wi-Fi access to people who come into your home, whether it's family members or friends and making it easier for those devices um, to get connected. If you go and buy third party devices, for example, if you buy Sonos speakers or a TV connected device, we we look to make it easier to onboard those devices and make it easier to connect those devices to the Internet. So it's really rethinking how do we you know, not only continue to innovate around speed and Wi-Fi, which in many ways are the, the, the kind of the foundation, but how do we really focus on this connectivity with control? And that is something that I think, again, we're at the early stages of, but it's an important ingredient to the broader vision we have around the connected home and how we see these devices getting connected, but also how we see the control uh, being uh, of equal importance as part of that connectivity. Um, lastly, are, are you seeing any differences in demographics or is it really technological uh, adaptability or capability of, of your your market essentially? Is, is it young people are, are more tech savvy or are you just seeing some people are tech savvy and some people aren't? 
Well, I, 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 there is, of course, uh, there are, of, of course, people who are more tech savvy than others. But, um, you know, it's kind of you were noting, like we we speak to a household, you know, and we, you know, if you look across the 29 million household relationships that we have, you know, we really speak to every demographic. And in many ways, I think that is part of, of where are these products become so interesting to many people because, um, you know, you can go out and buy some of these products on the market. I mean, they exist. If you if you really wanted to seek out and spend a lot of money, you can cobble these things together as some people do. I think part of the benefit of what we provide is one immediate scale. So when I mentioned XFi, you know, that was available to 10 million of our customers overnight. And the second is it's included. We're not, we don't charge incremental for this. We, we believe this should be part of the value we provide when you take our, our high speed data and gateway and, I think there is a real value. And then the third is simplicity. Um, and I think that that is ultimately the the lifeblood to adoption. You know, when you really look at adoption curves, um, there's always kind of this, you know, early on, it's always the early adopters by default. But what really transcends technology is when you can get this more in integrated into everyday families and everyday homes. And then that's really where we're focused on. And I think that when you look at XFi and the capabilities of XFi, but then you also marry that with a lot of the connective devices that we're making available, as I mentioned earlier, with Xfinity Home, you know, and the, the, the connected home and the digital home is our future. And I think that, you know, there's one other component, which a lot of people don't necessarily think about, but, you know, is something that we believe is going to be a, a very important element of this as well is the television. And I think that what you will see over time is, you know, when we talk about the television today, you know, a lot of us think of it in terms of video. I'm watching television, I'm watching like a movie, a sporting event, you know, a primetime show, or I'm watching Netflix. And, and that of course is a very, uh, it's a great value, but the television is going through an evolution where I, I think it's gonna become more and more of a display. Um, the largest display in the home and that it will become a conduit not only for delivering video, but for how a lot of these devices in the home will get rendered. So, for example, um, right now, if you have Xfinity uh, home and you have X1, you can speak into your voice remote and say, show me my Xfinity cameras. And now the television is, is transmitting the wireless camera in my front door onto the television screen. Or I can speak into my voice remote and say, turn the thermostat to 70 degrees. And, and a message appears on the television that shows that you know the thermostat's been turned down to 70 degrees. And I'm only highlighting these as fairly basic examples, but I, I think they're important because directionally that is our future. That is, I think, a huge opportunity to how customers will start to interact with all these devices. And the TV, I think, will become a growing, growingly an important element to how a lot of these devices will get rendered um, and, and that people will typically default to the best screen that's available to them. And when it's your, you're in your home, that's, that's likely going to be your television. Agreed. Thank you, Matt Strauss. And thank you all for listening to the Voices of the Internet of Things.